Hello friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. We're resuming our series building a photo gallery web application using Angular Dart and Aqueduct. In the last video where we left off was we had built our form and we had added validation to that form. Now we are going to be looking at our gallery creation flow. So using that form to actually create a gallery, the database and also implement logic that will allow us to view that gallery. So I'm not going to waste your time any further. Let's get into it. So at this point, I'm going to go back to our service and then just refactor certain parts for Dia, for instance, we can make this private because it's publicly exposed and we'll not be using this directly in other files. Also, Dia takes in a list of options so we can configure these options. And for instance, we can set the base URL to that. So that means for our operations we define, we don't need to specify this base URL. It's already done here for us. So I'll just save that. I want us to look at how we can add a new gallery. Of course, we've got our add new gallery page already implemented. So let's look at how we can wire it up to our backend. Okay, so we're going to define a method to allow us to make a post request to add a new gallery to our database. So this will be another future returning a gallery object. And then the method will be called update gallery. This will take in payload of type gallery. It's asynchronous. And then we'll make our API call. So it'll be do.post. And we just need to pass in an empty string because it's to the same endpoint. And then we need to specify our data, which is our payload that will invoke the to JSON method. And then for our response, we want to do gallery from JSON and we'll do response.data, which is because posting to our backend will return the JSON object that was added to the database as a response. All right, so that should do. And then let's invoke this in our form. Actually, we're not going to invoke that here directly. Instead, we are going to emit an event when our form is valid, which means that in our gallery new component is where we'll be making the API call. So to emit an event, we will need to define a stream. Then I'll call that form update control. And we need to define a stream controller type gallery. We need to import the dart async library. So now that we've got our stream controller, we we'll define an output annotation and I'll give this a custom name called on update. And then what we are annotating is a getter called form update. And that is a handle to our form update controls stream. So what that means is that in here, we will just do form update control to add gallery as such. So in order to get this gallery object, we'll come over here and then for our gallery form, we just need to define an on update event as such, which is why we named it as on update. So we can use this name here or else we would have had to define form update, but I prefer on update, which is why I renamed it. So on update, we just invoke a method called update gallery and uh, let's just define that here define our method update gallery we receive the gallery and let's import our gallery model and also we need our gallery service in fact let's add it to let's add it to our list of providers let's define our constructor and inject it okay that should be good and now we are able to add our gallery okay so let's check this out in the browser. So if I go to add new gallery and let's add our second gallery. Okay, got a four or five, which is expected because uh, we've not, it's not set up on the back end, but at least we can confirm that we are sending JSON data across. All right, so let's go to the server side I'll collapse that. I'll open the server side. Let's close all these files. And then I'll come to controller. We'll look at our gallery controller. And then we'll add a post operation that also returns a response. We'll call it create gallery. 
mark it as async and then the easiest way of going about this is to in here we can do bind dot body and then we can cast it to gallery type and then i call it payload so behind the scenes aqueduct will take our payload and it will inject that information into our gallery model and it will essentially produce a gallery object from our payload so this is what we need to define in order to achieve that we'll create a query and then i do query dot values equal to our payload such in fact i can do that what i'll do is return response dot okay and then i'll await query dot query dot insert so this should do okay so i'm going to restart the server and then let's try this out so i'll attempt to send this request again and we get a 200 response so everything work and then this is our response from the database we know it worked because we got an id back i'll come back to our client and i'll come to gallery new and then what I want to do here is to navigate back to the home page when we successfully added our gallery so to do that I'll inject our router search and then I need to import angular router and then in here we can do router.navigate and we just want to go back to the home page so let me go back let's come back to the browser and let's add our third gallery some description and then there we go we get redirected here to the home page and here's our third gallery okay i want to show a pop-up a toast message whenever we've successfully added a gallery so we'll be using materials widgets for the toast notifications let's look at that now so if i come to the documentation on the material object we just need to invoke a method called toast and then we can pass in some options as such with all of these in in source common js interrupt materialize let's create another js annotation and this will invoke the toast method then we need the external keyword this will return a toast object in fact we don't need to okay let's just set it to void and then we'll say init toast then we'll give it a list of options so let's go ahead and define our toast options and because it's a javascript object we just need a class un annotated with anonymous and then the js annotation like what we've done here so we define our toast options class we define an external factory constructor and then we define a string containing our html and also we can also define a string of classes from looking at the docs so if we come to the docs we can define classes to be added to the toast element okay so now that we've got it here let's go and use it i'll import our materialized file and then upon successfully creating a gallery we can do init toast function and then define our toast options such our html will be successfully added gallery and let's give it some classes as well we use the green class and then the dark in three so let's check this out at our fourth gallery once i hit create there we go we're redirected and we've seen this toast message which disappears after a couple of seconds because we can add more options around our duration and then the display length and so on and so forth but i'll just leave it out for now i can wrap this in a try catch so if we happen to get an error from our endpoint i'll just say just say problem creating gallery and we can add some classes as well and we just make it red yeah so let's test this failure briefly so i'll come to service and then i'll literally just throw and let's try that okay there we go and then it disappears and let's remove that 
So right now, let's set up our gallery route because at the moment when you hover over it, it just goes to the root URL. But we need to define a route for each of these galleries. So in the address bar, it will look like gallery and then the gallery ID. Currently it doesn't exist. So let's go and build that now. I will come to our source directory under PG client folder. And then under pages, I'll create a new file. I'll call it gallery view component. I'll import angular dart and then I'll import angular router. And then in here we'll define the component annotation. It takes in a selector, we just call it gallery view. We'll define a template for this view. So I use the multi-line string and let's define a row. We'll define a column and then we'll define a heading. And then I'll come down here and I'll define a class. So we'll call it gallery view component. And then let's connect this in our routing. So I'll come to our root paths. And then I'll define another root path for our gallery view. And then the path will be our gallery followed by an ID param. So we we'll just do the colon followed by the name of our path parameter. We we'll call it ID. So I'll save that. And then I'll come to our routes. And then we'll add a definition for our gallery view here as well. We need to import that component. So I'll change that to gallery view and change that to gallery view. So here will be our gallery view template. And then we want the gallery view ng component factory. And let's just add that to this list. Okay. And once that's done, we will come to our home component. Actually, in our home component, we need to go to our gallery list directive. And then over here, we have an anchor. But before we can do anything to that, we need to make sure that our router is accessible by our template. So I'll import our router and then import our routes, which means that in our directives, we need to add our router directives from Angular router. And then we need to define our exports. In particular, we need to export our root paths and I'll just save that. So let's go back to our template now. And then over here, instead of doing the href, we can do router link. And then over here, we'll do root paths. And then we want our gallery view. And then we'll invoke the to URL method. And in fact, because this takes in parameters, I don't think we can define it as such. So instead of this way, what we need to do is now gallery list component, we'll define an helper method called gallery view URL. This helper method will take in our gallery ID and then it will return to URL. And then here we'll define our parameters search and over here we'll define our ID parameter and then we'll pass in the ID. Okay, that needs to be a string. So we we'll do string and then we'll prepend a dollar to put the actual ID in there rather than the string ID. So that should do. And then I'll come back to our template and then and let's use our gallery view URL. Then we'll pass in the items ID. Okay, so I'll come back to the browser. I'll reload. And for some reason, okay, the no such method error ID. Okay, let's take a look at our um, gallery model. There is no ID on our gallery model, or we are not capturing the ID from our JSON response. I'll define an ID in here, and then we can pass the ID in here. So let me save this and then let's come to this file 
our gallery list component and our import our model in fact we should have done this a while ago and then I'll cast this list of items to the gallery type it should work for us if I refresh yeah then we get our titles and when I hover over it look at the bottom left you should have the right URL so we after the host we see the hash and we see gallery slash one when i click on it it brings me here and search with the right url so let's come back here i'll close this at this point it'll be good to be able to output the title of our gallery in the gallery view screen we need to add another route on our server side that we're going to query to retrieve information about this gallery so i'll come to our server side and then I'll go to PG server, source controllers, gallery controller. Let's add another get to retrieve a particular gallery. I'll define another operation called get. And in here, I'll pass in a path parameter, which will be called ID. And then this will be a method that returns a response type. I'll call this method get gallery and we are going to bind to that path parameter called id and then we'll cast it to an integer such we'll mark this as a sync we'll define a query object and then it will be based on our gallery model we'll use this method called where the gallery's id is equal to the id in our path we'll do return response to ok and then we will await on our query and we'll and we'll invoke the fetch one method so i shall save that now we need to do something else so we need to come to our channel and then in our route that we've defined for gallery we need to actually define our path variable so we'll do that okay so i'll save that i'll rerun the server and then we need to come back to our client i'll close that and that and then in our client we need to come to our gallery service and then we're going to define another method to retrieve that single gallery we define our response and then we just need to do do dot get will be for slash and then pass in our id to it so it'll be gallery slash then our id i just need to return gallery from json and it'll be our response dot data and then we need to come to our gallery view component so we need to actually make the api call to retrieve that gallery from our database because we're importing angular router we need to implement the unactivate hook which relates to our router so we want to have an override and we are overriding the on activate method we will retrieve our gallery id from our path then we can attempt to convert this so i'll call it id and then we'll check if our gallery id is null then we'll return null or else we'll try and pass the gallery id and then from that we can make a call to the api we actually need to inject our gallery service i use the relative path okay i've already done this so it should be familiar over here we can await on our gallery service and then we invoke get gallery and pass in that id when that call is made and the response is sent back we need to we need to assign it to something so i'll create an instance variable called gallery and then we'll do that and let's import our gallery let's output the gallery title here search and now let's test it out okay we're getting invalid member now let's see if the network request happens okay we are not making the network call let's see what we're doing wrong let's wrap this in a template in an ng if so I'll do template ng if so if our gallery is now equal to null 
then we want to do this bit and I'll close off our template and let's try loading this again I see our console oh wait we're getting an error in the terminal okay so error is caused by this bit we need to in our gallery view component we need to import our core directives okay let's save that and that should be good and when I reload we're back here and then calls visiting gallery one we get my first gallery so the API call actually happens and then in our response it returns a JSON containing details of our gallery um, I think I'll just get rid of this word here we we'll just say viewing that yeah that should do in fact I'll just put in double quotes I'm just being picky right now okay so at this point I will do some refactorings so I'll, I'll cut all of that and then I'll come to our root paths and in here I'll define a helper function called get id this takes in a map of parameters and then it'll do all that so we fetch in our id from our parameters and then we're just gonna return this expression so if id is null it will just return null or else it will pass the id for us and also another thing they did on the docs was to save the repetition of this id key it was defined here as such id param and then this was passed in here as such and then uh, you can pass this in here like that as well and then if we come back to our gallery view component we're now able to do and then we'll pass in our parameters like so and here will be gallery id so i'll save that and let's make sure it still works yeah still works and this ends the video here i hope you found it informative i hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something different if you did hit the like button if you're not a subscriber hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any updates if you've got any comments if you've got any general feedback do let me know down in the comment section below i do take a look and lastly but not least i've got a patreon page set up i am releasing premium tutorials on there as well as releasing these series a week before it's streamed on youtube so if you are interested in joining become a member to get access thank you